Hi, good afternoon. Today's session is about how to get PDUs for your PMI certifications. This is applicable for almost all the certifications from PMI, including PMP, Project Management Professional, CAPM, Certified Associate in Project Management, RMP, Risk Management Professional, SP, Scheduling Professional, ACP, Agile Certified Professional, PGMP, Program Management Professional, PFMP, Portfolio Management Professional, DASM, Disciplined Agile, Scrum Master, and DAWSM, Disciplined Agile, Senior Scrum Master. So if you are holding any one or more of these certifications, this information will be helpful for you to know how to maintain your, you know, certification. So a brief introduction about me. My name is Angel Bright Anthony. I'm, I'm a PMI approved trainer to conduct PMP training, DASM and DAWSM training programs. I have a master's in engineering. I also have a MBA, master's in business administration. These are the certifications I'm having, risk management professional, project management professional, and scrum, scrum master, senior scrum master certifications. I have 22 plus years of experience, primarily in project management, risk management, and strategy management. Currently, I'm working as a project engineer with a major government organization in Qatar in their project management office. I'm also delivering training programs I'm doing, I'm conducting training programs, management training programs from 2005 onwards. So far, I have conducted more than 200 management certification training programs and have trained more than 5,000 professionals. Most of them are for PMI certifications such as PMP, RMP, et cetera. That's briefly about me. Uh, the organization on behalf of which I'm providing this presentation is B-Side Consulting and Training. This is a Qatar-based organization, however, providing training worldwide. They are providing online PMP training for professionals, online as well as classroom training for corporates. They also provide project management consultancy, project management software implementation, etc. You can visit their website for more details about this organization. Let's start with the you know, core details. If you are a certification holder from PMI, you are required to maintain your PMP certification, PMP as well as any other, you know, PMI certification. There is a validity period. For example, PMP is valid for three years. Within this three years, you have to get some professional development units, which is shortly known as PDU. That is the continuous certification requirements from PMI. Depends on the certification you are holding. There are number of PDUs you have to play or you have to get. So what do you mean by a PDU? PDUs are one hour blocks of time that you spend learning, teaching others or volunteering. Any knowledge enhancement activity you are doing for an hour, it will be equivalent to one PDU. So this is important for PMI certification renewal. Without getting these PDUs, you can't actively maintain your PMP certification. The idea behind that is knowledge enhancement. As you can see there, time you spend either in enhancing your knowledge or enhancing others' knowledge will get you PDUs. Let's see the details, how to you know, get the required PDUs. Before I start with the details of getting the PDUs, you need to understand about PMI talent triangle. Because most of the PDUs you are going to get will be based on PMI's talent tri triangle. Recently, there was a change. Earlier, it was like three areas of focus, strategic and business management. Now that is changed to business acumen. Earlier it was technical project management. Now it is ways of working. Leadership has been changed to power skills. So PMI is continuously improving the methodology by which they provide the certification and they help us to maintain the certification. So according to the latest market research done by PMI, these are the three ideal set of skills project professionals must develop 
and hone to be successful and work smarter in ever evolving world of project management. So you have to get PDUs in these three areas, business acumen, ways of working, power skills to maintain your PMI certification before going further into the details. In case you got few PDUs old on new, sorry, based on old PMI talent triangle, you don't want to worry about that. Automatically that will be mapped to the new triangle. Say you got like 10 PDUs under technical project management earlier, it will be automatically put under base of work. So any new PDUs you are uh, reporting, claiming that has to be according to the, you know, new updated talent triangle. So we will go through those three areas and understand what are some example activities you can do or areas of focus you can you, you need to know to get the required PDUs. So let's start with business acumen. This is mainly about the business environment. When we learned, you know, as part of the PMP training program, like three domains, first domain is about people, second domain is about process, and third domain is about business environment. This is mainly about the business environment area. So to get PDUs in this area, you need to understand the macro and micro influences across an organization and industry and have the function or domain specific knowledge to make good decisions. When they say domain specific knowledge, that could be project management, program management, portfolio management, risk management, etc. Some examples are given there. You can attend training programs or you can share your knowledge based on benefits management and realization, business models and structures, competitive analysis, customer relationship and satisfaction, industry domain knowledge, as I mentioned about, you know, project management or your area, construction, IT, et cetera, legal and regulatory complaints, market awareness, function specific knowledge, strategic planning, analysis, alignment, et cetera. So if you do activities related to one or more of those areas, you will be eligible to claim PDUs in business acumen area. The second side is about ways of working. If you are a PMP certified professional, you know about like three or five major ways of working. You could be doing the work in predictive methodology, agile methodology, iterative methodology, incremental methodology or hybrid methodology. So there is no like single set of methodology that will be applicable for all the industries. You need to pick and choose what is more applicable for your kind of work. So some aspects of your work, you may apply predictive methodology. Some other aspects, you may apply agile methodology, maybe design thinking, et cetera. So if you're doing activity related to this, you will be eligible to claim PDUs under ways of working. For example, agile and hyper agile, hybrid design thinking, transformation, data gathering and modeling, EVM, earned value management, governance, performance management, requirements management and traceability, risk management, schedule management, cost management, you know, any of those knowledge areas. We have scope management, time budget, estimation, et cetera. So any management related you know, knowledge you are gaining, then it goes under this particular category, ways of working. Third and the last is about the power skills. Earlier it was about leadership. Now, you know, when you say power skills, leadership is one of the skills. There are other skills like active listening, communication, adaptability, brainstorming, coaching and mentoring, conflict management, emotional intelligence, influencing, interpersonal skills, negotiation, problem solving, teamwork, etc. Where you know, this can help you to improve your power skills. And if you do any activities related to that, you can claim PDUs under this particular category. So that's briefly about those three sides of the PMI talent triangle. Coming to PDUs, professional development units, for all the certifications, you have to claim PDUs under two categories. 
education category and giving back category. Education category is mandatory, giving back is optional. So this is a simple table telling you how many PDUs you have to get totally to maintain that certification and what is the period in which you have to get that PDUs and minimum how many PDUs you have to get from education and maximum how many PDUs you can get from, you know, giving back area. For example, if you are a PMP certification holder, your PMP, sorry, your certification cycle starts from the day you pass the examination and it will be valid for three years. In this three years time, you have to get 60 PDUs. Out of the 60 PDUs, minimum 35 PDUs should be from education category mandatory category. So if you are a PMP certification holder, you should get 35 PDUs from education category minimum. And if you are claiming PDUs under giving back, maximum you can claim 25 PDUs from that category. Maximum is 25 here. Here minimum 35 PDUs. Similarly, PGMP, PFMP, PFA requirements are the same. So PBA is professional in business analysis, having the same requirement as PMP. If you are an RMP certification holder, your certification cycle is also three years. However, you have to get only 30 PDUs to maintain your RMP certification in that 18 PDUs minimum from education and maximum of 12 PDUs you can get from giving back category. If you are an Agile certified, certified professional, scheduling professional, the requirements are same. If you are a certified associate in project management certification holder, your certification cycle is also three years. However, you have to get only 15 PDUs, minimum nine from education and maximum six from giving back category. So that gives an idea about the certification. All are having the same certification cycle total number of PDUs required for those certification, minimum education PDU requirements, and maximum giving back PDU requirements. This is the further you know, breakdown of education PDUs. As we discussed, you have to get the PDUs from or for those three sides of triangle. At a minimum, eight PDUs you have to get per site. Ways of working, you have to get eight PDUs. Power skills, eight PDUs. And business acumen also, you have to get eight PDUs. That is 24 PDUs. So minimum you have to get 35. The remaining PDUs you can get from any of the sections. So after 24, you have to get 11 more PDUs that all 11 can be from one of those sites or shared between those sites. There is no limitation. So that's what is mentioned here. When you go for giving back, you have to get 25 PDUs and there is no split up there. You can do any activities which comes under that particular category and you can get the required PDUs directly. You can claim for that. If you are claiming for working as a professional category under giving back, you can claim maximum eight PDUs if you are holding PMP, PGMP, PFMP or PBA certification. I will explain that in the coming slides. And 17 PDUs maximum for volunteering and creating knowledge. So let's focus on the education category and then we will talk about the giving back category. So as I mentioned, Minimum eight PDUs from each side you have to get and remaining PDUs you can get from any of those sites. There is no limitation. So this is what exactly I mentioned in the previous slide. So from the education category for PMP, PGMP, PFMP and PBA, you have to get 35 minimum PDUs. In that you have to get, get eight from each category 
remaining 11 you can get from any of those categories. Whereas for ACP, RMP and SP, you have to get 18 PDUs from education category, four from each of those subcategory and remaining six you can get from any of those categories. For CAPM, nine from education category. So two from each of the category and the remaining three from any of those categories you can get. So that's a, you know, understanding about the educational PDU requirements. Moving further. When it comes to PMP, PGMP, PFMP, and PBA, from the giving back, you can get maximum 25 PDUs that you can get through volunteering, creating knowledge, or working as a professional. Like I'm working as a senior projects engineer. In some of the projects, I work as a project manager. So for the three-year cycle, I can claim eight PDUs from this category. If you are having ACP, RMP, and SP, or one of those certifications, you can claim maximum four PDUs for working as a professional category. For CAPM, maximum two PDUs you can claim for working as a professional category. And there are like remaining volunteering and creating knowledge as required, maximum of 25 PDUs you can claim from those two. That's about giving back category. So these are the areas of focus under education category, those max minimum 35 PDUs. You can attend a course or a training, either it is a face-to-face -face training or it's a live online training, then it will be coming under that category. If you are attending some organizational meetings which in which you learn about one of those aspects we discussed earlier, one of the sides of the triangle or more than one of the sides of the triangle, you can claim PDUs for that, but it is limited to one to two PDUs per meeting. If you have watched a recorded webinar, then you can go for online or digital media or you have an e-learning access and you used it to gain some knowledge. Self-directed reading and informal learning. Say you purchased a book and you read it, etc. Then it will be coming under that particular category. So there is no limitation of how many PDUs you have to get from those subcategories. Maybe you can get all 35 PDUs from course or training. Similarly, when it goes to the next category, giving back to profession, these are some of the you know, areas from where you can get that maximum 25 PDUs as a PMP. Work as a practitioner, as we discussed, maximum eight if you're a PMP. RMP means maximum four. You can create content. It's not mandatory you have to create content. Say you have written an article in a project management magazine or projectmanagement.com is a website from PMI. You can you have a, a knowledge to share. You can write, you know, uh, an article that will give you PDUs. Give a presentation like me, providing trainings, presentations that will give me PDUs. Sharing knowledge, coaching or mentoring others will give or volunteering in project management activities or PMI chapter meetings, etc., will give you PDUs as well. So these are the, you know subcategories from where you can get PDUs. So I give a brief overview about how many PDUs you have to get and from which areas you can get those PDUs. A knowledge check. I've given here four scenarios and check whether they are true or false. You can have PDUs like that or not. So let's say for PMP certification. From education, you can you have to get 35 PDUs, or if you are getting 35 PDUs, and from giving back, you are getting 25 PDUs. Can you renew your PMP certification? 35 plus 25, I got 60 PDUs. As you can see here, minimum 35 I have to get from education, which I got. Maximum 25 I can get from giving back, which I got. So the answer is yes, you can renew your PMP certification. In case I got all the required PDUs from education, zero from giving back. Can I renew my PMP certification? If I go back, if I go back to the previous slide, as you can see here, giving back to profession is optional PDU. You 
don't need to get any PDUs from that. If you got all the required from required PDUs from education, still you can renew your PMP certification. That is true. For that reason, scenario three is also true. You can get you have to get minimum thirty five PDUs, so you are getting it from education. So you are getting in scenario two and scenario three. Giving back is optional, so that is also true. Last one. You are getting 30 PDUs from education and 30 PDUs from giving back. Can I renew my PMP certification? As we know, you have to get minimum 35 PDUs from education. Here you got only 30 PDUs, so that will not work. You cannot actually renew your PMP certification. With that, you have to get five more PDUs you know, from the education to renew your certification. That's to, that, that is to give an idea, okay, how to get PDUs and these categories, etc. What process PMI is following to record and you know provide you the PDUs? First, you have to earn a PMP set PMI certification such as PMP or RMP. Sometimes I get this question from our participants. You know, I did a training a few months back, but today or last week I got my PMP. Can I? use that to get my PDUs? The answer is no, you cannot. The day you pass the exam, your continuous certification requirement cycles begins and lasts for a period of three years for almost all the certifications except DASM and DASSM. So the activities what you have done after getting your PMI certification, that only you can report as PDUs for PDUs. Participate in professional development. That's what active professional development activities do. In order to earn PDUs, you will need to participate in professional development activities. Some of the activities or the possible activities I mentioned in the previous slide, I'll explain more in the live demo. Record and report PDUs. This also you have to know how to record and report PDUs. It's a very easy process. Just know the you know, methodology. Fulfill CCR requirements. That's what we have discussed so far. How many PDUs you have to show from each category. So earn the required PDUs to meet the you know, CCR requirements. And complete CCR application and pay renewal fee. So once you get the required PDUs, PMI will send you a renewal notice. And you have to make the payment and renew your PMP or any PMI certification. If you are a member of PMI, you will pay $60 to renew your PMP and you know other certifications as required. If you are a non-member of PMI, you will pay $150 to renew your certification. So it's always better to be a member of PMI and then you know renew your PMP certification. So that is a very simple process they are following to report your PDUs. Now let's see how to get the required PDU. So you understood like what PDUs I have to get, which areas I have to focus how many PDUs I have to get. So now we are going to discuss how to get the required PDUs. Option one, you can get free PDUs. PMI themselves is providing free PDUs through projectmanagement.com and through you know PMI.org. Projectmanagement.com you know, is a subsidiary uh, website of PMI. It's a, a knowledge sharing website. So you can visit www.projectmanagement.com. So I will open the website and I'll show you a demonstration. If you go to www.projectmanagement.com, you have to use your PMI username and password to log in, right? This is my login, right? So projectmanagement.com, you can see there that's again from. PMI. So in the home page itself, they will show you some webinars which you can watch. For example, where do I begin to create an ethical culture in my organization? This will give you one PDU. Duration of this is 50 minutes. So if you want to identify more webinars, you can go to webinars and under webinars, you will see the option as on-demand webinars. So if you go to on-demand webinars, you will get a list of webinars as well as your certification details. So 
totally there are you know 216 pages so all the required pdfs you can get by watching the videos in this you know on demand webinars page of projectmanagement.com you can also filter say for which certification you are looking for pm sorry pdfs say i'm looking for pdfs for pmp certification pmp pgmp same certification or my rmp certification then you can choose that you know filtering option it will show the webinars by watching which you will get pdfs for your pmp certification or common for both pmp and rmp then we can choose you can see number of you know webinars available there so you can choose your topic that you are interested in agile or benefits realization there are few few topics you can choose that or you can just leave it to see all the possible webinars then go down so as we discussed you have to get minimum 8 pdfs from each side of the triangle maybe you already fulfilled the 8 pdfs from ways of working and with power skills but you haven't get the required got the required pdfs from business acumen you can just select that then it will show you the webinars by which you can get pdfs for business acumen if you are a non member of pmi you can access only free uh, webinars 298 are there if you are a member of pmi you can access premium webinars as well so that's another benefit of being a pmi member if you already viewed it you got the pm P pdfs for that you can just select you know sorry not viewed and i don't want to see the viewed one so then it will show and english or arabic or any specific language you want to watch you can choose that i'll say i want only english webinars so i selected that i want to get i want to watch pdfs sorry webinars that gives me pdfs for my pmp certification and i haven't got the required pdfs for business acumen so i select that in case you want to get pdfs from all three areas just remove it and i am a member of pmi so i can watch both free and premium and i want to see what i haven't watched yet in english language any topic you are interested you can select that from that list say i want to see agile related webinars then i'll get agile related webinars so the benefit of watching webinar from projectmanagement.com is it will be auto reported within couple of days this pdfs will be reflecting in your certification page you don't want to manually report it any other activities you are doing then you have to manually report it this is option 1 most of our participants they get their pdfs from you know projectmanagement.com option 2 you can go to pmi.org there are some free courses some of those courses will give you one pdf some of them like two pdfs by the way there are paid courses as well you can attend those paid courses and you can get the required pdfs as well if you are not a member yet become a member and log in to pmi's website after logging in you can go to learning and events and you can go for online courses so if you go to online courses in the left hand side you can see free courses obviously you can go and purchase the you know paid courses for example if you are going for pma authorized online pmp practice exam it will cost you 99 dollars but it will give you 3 pdfs so you want to know okay how the latest pmp exam is what kind of questions they are asking you can pay 100 dollars or 99 dollars and you can get you know uh 3 pdfs if you want to go for free courses go to the section here so learning and events online courses free and here you have some free courses for example highlights from the 21 virtual experience series will give you one pdf introduction to pmp will give you one pdf basic of scrum one pdf business continuity will give you 4.5 pdfs project management for beginners will give you four pdfs and you know wicked problem solving will give you one pdf etc just add to cart as like how you are purchasing membership or purchasing you know a certification program check out no need to pay and it will be in your learning area and you can you know watch those videos uh, as required if you go to webinars it will take you to or it will ask you to go to projectmanagement.com and 
So if I go to view all webinars, it will take me to projectmanagement.com and I can watch all the webinars there. These are some of the options by which you can get free PDUs. In fact, most of the or all the required PDUs you can get from projectmanagement.com or from pmi.org. Right. Next step. Okay. I watched a video outside of these two sources, like someone attended RMP training with B site or scheduling professional training with B site or Six Sigma training with B site. It won't be auto registered. You have to claim for the PDUs. So you need to go to your dashboard from your name. You can select dashboard. It will show you all the available certifications. For example, I have disciplined agile scrum master. I recently renewed it. So this is a yearly renewal. I'll come back to this at the end. Let me go to PMP. My renewal deadline is 21st March, 2024. And, you know, I have to get additional PDUs, 2.5 PDUs remaining. RMP, I recently renewed I mean, last month, October. So uh, I got 10 PDUs already for my next cycle. Next cycle is ending at 2025 only. So there are a couple of options by which you can report PDUs. Go to report PDUs option and you can report or you can go up here and there will be an option here to report PDU certifications. You can go to PMP and or here certification overview report PDUs, you can use that option to report PDUs. Whichever option you are using, it will take you to another web link, ccrs.pmi.org. That is continuous, continuous certification requirements. So you have to log in using your username and password, you know, member or non-member, you can access this page. So there are options by which you can, you know, claim PDUs, you can uh, see how many PDUs you have claimed so far, right? I need to get uh, eight minimum from, you know, ways of working. I got 31.5 already. Eight minimum from power skills. I got 10.5. Minimum eight from business acumen. I got 5.5. So remaining. So these two I already fulfilled. However, I have to get more for business acumen. So working as a practitioner, I haven't claimed yet. I can get maximum eight and other giving back. I have claimed 10 PDUs. There is no limit in that, but maximum I can get 25 in that category. Okay. So all the details you can see here and how many more days left for renewing my PMP certification details will be there. I can go and, you know, report PDUs or, you know, from here, you can go to report PDUs or own PDUs. You can review your claim as well. Sorry, the previous claim as well. I'll go to your own PDUs to know how to get these PDUs, right? So first education category, second giving back category. Education category, as I told you, you can attend education courses or classes in person or online. Like you attended, some of you attended RMP certification recently, certification training with us recently to claim PDUs you have to go to that particular section. Second is about organization meetings. One to two PDUs you can claim, right? Meetings, activities, local events related to profession, right? Next, online or digital media, the PDU or the webinars, what you are watching with projectmanagement.com or that you know, online training you are taking with PMI, you will put that here, as you can see here, projectmanagement.com or this. But in fact, if you are watching from projectmanagement.com, it will be auto, you know, approved under this category. Read, you can purchase a book, not necessary to from, from PMI, any from library or from other bookstores like Amazon. You can, you know, uh, claim that PDF under this, right? Informal learning. So educational opportunities focus on structured discussion like some knowledge sharing sessions you had or lunch and learn sessions you had, those PDUs you can claim under this category. These are the education categories. By the way, when you are submitting your PDU request, PMI will not ask for any documentation. Mostly it will be auto-approved if all the details are correct. However, it is always good to maintain some documentation. 
at the end of your renewal cycle when you are renewing your pmp certification or any pmi certification pmi might ask for documentation proof or during your claim if they want additional information they will ask for documentation proof so if you are attending a course or training have the course completion certificate with you right so if you are attending organization meetings have some like you no know, meeting invite or the key points minutes of meeting some kind of evidence online or digital media projectmanagement.com you don't need evidence because it's auto approved in case you are attending uh, online webinar outside of these sources have the registration you know document or participation document any document you are having if you are reading you have to put notes day wise notes right maximum say 10 pdus you are claiming for reading a book then you have to show like you know 10 hours minimum i have spent in reading this book these are the notes i have created informal learning again some kind of meeting invites notes etc you need to maintain again only if you are selected for audit or if they need more information you have to submit these documents giving back work as a practitioner as we discussed maximum 8 pdus if you are going for pmp and 4 pdus if you are going for rmp you can claim create content again like sometimes i design courses for my organization i claim under this particular category give presentation i give a lot of presentation right that goes under this particular category one to two pdus i'll be claiming for that sharing knowledge right so you helped at this like conducting training my pmp trainings rmp trainings i claim under that category sharing knowledge volunteering as we discussed any of like again any non employer or non client organizations you have a local pmi chapter and you have volunteered there or you know like any other i mean again project management or your domain related volunteering if you are done you need to you know you can claim pdus from that particular area great so these are you know uh, the ways how you can get the pdus hope it's clear now how to report pdus go to report and pd under pdus go to report pdus i'll show you one example almost it will be the same for others as well so pdu claim code if you are if you have taken a training with atp authorized training provider then you will be getting a code from the you can input that code there but that's not mandatory even you know like any public courses or organization you know provided courses non atp provided courses you can go under course or training provider name so you can type for example b site consulting here it's not mandatory it has to be there but you can type any organization the name of the organization you have in the certificate course completion excuse me course completion certificate you have to provide here name of the course say for example risk management professional description a brief description about that particular training by the way after provider and course i mean the third option the third column is optional but it's always advisable to give some information this is a risk management professional preparation certification training and this includes like go to the exam content outline and you know get that information those five modules we covered in that put that here date started when this started date completed when it completed and url you can give for example bsite.org contact person you can provide my name if you took the training you know like from our side contact phone you have the details contact email again you have the details in which from which you received the materials lms access details and all you can provide that or you know the org from organization from where you took it over these details are optional now another important point you have to know if you are holding multiple certifications it is not mandatory or it's not required for you to do separate activities to claim pdus you can do one activity and you can claim pdus for all the certifications for example i have dasm dasm rmp pmp the pdu what i am going to claim will be for all certifications or the activity say assume i i undertook this rmp certificate certification training and i'm claiming right or one of the certification training so first you need to split that between ways of working power skills and ac business acumen you need to know the power skills and business acumen pdu will be common for all say for example in that from that training i got two pdus for power skills for business acumen i got like say one pd for example so you can see 
same is applicable for all other certifications as well. Now, ways of working, that is domain specific, certification specific. Like I attended a training program. It's mostly about, you see, like, you know, uh, agile, risk management, scheduling, et cetera. So maybe it's a, a 10 hours training program, as you then three hours I have shown here. So seven hours I'll show here. So totally I'll get 10 PDUs for that. Out of the seven hours, like out of 10 hours, yes, three hours we have already claimed for RMP. Maybe two hours we discussed about risk management. So you can claim two PDUs for ways of working. One hour we discussed about agile. So I can say one and one here. So for PMP, I'm claiming all 10 PDUs. However, because all the concepts we learned in that seven hours are PMP related concepts, project management related concepts. Similarly, PGMP, PFMB certificate, certificate holders can do the same. In that only two hours we discussed for discussed about risk. So I put two PDUs there, right? So here maybe you can spend, I mean, you can put seven maximum, but however, there could be questions from PMI sometimes. How you are claiming same number of PDUs for ways of working for PMP and RMP? Is it fully risk-related concepts you have learned? Or similarly, if you put seven for DASM or Agile certification, same questions you can expect. So you need to do a review or ask to the training provider. I'm going to apply for PDUs. How many PDUs I should claim from ways of work under ways of working, power skills, and business acumen? So this is only for the activities you are taking outside of the projectmanagement.com or you know uh, yeah, pmi.org. So here you can provide that information. So that's how I'm claiming the PDUs. I agree this claim is accurate and you submit. So once you submit, they will tell you, okay, it's under review. We will get back to you as soon as it's approved. Within a couple of hours, usually you will get an approval notification. Same thing you have to do for other categories as well. If I go to report PDUs, same thing. So if you are taking order or meeting, then you have to provide details about the meeting, digital media, read means you have to provide the book details. Again, same thing. Working as professional, you have to provide details of your work, creating content, what kind of content you created, what kind of presentation, what knowledge you shared, what area you have to vol you volunteer. Same process. Once you submit your, you know, uh, PDUs, they will approve it and they will notify you about that. Hope it's clear. If you have any questions, you can always contact me and you know we will go to the last part about if I the FAQ, some frequently asked questions. What if I haven't got the required PDUs? Say I want to get 60 PDUs in three years for PMP. Say I haven't got my required PDUs in that three year cycle. So from the day you pass the exam, your certification cycle will start. In three years, say you got only 40 or 45 PDUs, you couldn't get all 60 PDUs, then your PMP or any PMA certification will be automatically suspended. Suspended for one year. So within that suspension period, by the way, during that period, you are not allowed to use PMP or the credential with your name. Within that suspension period, you have to get the remaining PDUs. Say in next six months time, you got the remaining PDUs, then immediately you can renew it. But you need to know your next cycle will not start from the renewal date. It will start from the expiry date of the first cycle, right? And then maybe you got the required PDUs of the first cycle after six months in suspension period. Then the second cycle will be two and a half years. In two years, six months, you have to get another 60 PDUs. So end of the suspension period, if you haven't, got the required PDUs, end of the suspension period. If you haven't got the required PDUs, then what will happen is your certification will be expired. You cannot renew it. You have to go back to step number one. Apply for the exam, pay the fees, take the exam, pass the exam and start your cycle. So if you contact PMI, still they will do the same. I don't know whether there are any exceptions are available. So normally within the suspension period, you have to get the required PDUs or else it will be, you know, expired. What if like, I want to get a retirement status for my PMP, 
Is it possible? Yes, but there are some criteria. First, you should not be primarily working in project management. You're not getting your remuneration, you know, uh, or primary remuneration by practicing project management. And you should be a PMP certification holder at least for 10 consecutive years. Then you can, you are eligible for retired status. You can write to PMI certification.ccr at pmi.org. So PMI will provide you the required forms, fill that, and you can get the retirement status. In case after getting the retirement status, you started working in project management again, then you can write to PMI to activate back to normal certification and you have to start claiming PDUs. Once you get required retired status, it is not required for you to get the required PDUs. Great. So, and one last point. What can I like transfer some of my PDUs from the current cycle to the next cycle? The answer is yes, but there is a limit. Maximum of 20 PDUs you got in the final year of your certification cycle, you can, you know, transfer that to the next cycle. So maximum of 20 PDUs you got in the final year, third year of your certification cycle, you can, you know, transfer what you got in year one and year two. You cannot transfer. Year 3, 20 PDUs you can transfer. So that's a quick overview about PM, sorry, PMI certification renewal process. Hope it's clear for you. If you got any questions, you can contact me in that you know email or in that phone number. Thank you.